and praise gathering. Joining us from Atlanta, Georgia are founding pastor of Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia, Dr. Michael Youssef, president of Southeastern College of the Assemblies of God, Dr. Mark Rutland, pastor of Central Baptist Church in Hickson, Tennessee, Pastor Ron Phillips, founding pastor of Fountain of Praise Worship Center in Atlanta, Georgia, Bishop G.A. Bryant, senior pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia, Bishop Eddie Long, ministering in music, recording artist Vicki Yoey. Ready to take your calls, prayer partners from around America. Worship Center in Gainesville, Georgia, Pastor Jensen Franklin. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We're so happy to be here coming to you live from Atlanta, Georgia. What a great, great night we're going to have. I just believe we couldn't have a better program lined up for you. Some of the generals in the body of Christ are with us. I know many of you have been watching the president as he's been giving his speech. And I just believe that God has ordained that this program be here and you be tuning in right now to hear a fresh word from the Lord. And we're so excited about what God is going to do. You know, I was coming over tonight and I thought about Isaiah 50 where he said that we should pray that God would give us the tongue of the learned, yes. that we might speak a word in season to people when they're weary. And I believe after all that we've been through as a nation and the suffering and the brokenness that is upon us now, that what we need is a learned tongue to speak into our lives and heal the weariness and the brokenness of our nation. And I tell you, we have some of the greatest voices I believe God has raised up in our lifetime. We have with us tonight, I just want to mention what, what a great group we've got. We've got Dr. Eddie Long from New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, and we all know and love him. And it's so good to have you, Dr. Long, with us. And Ron Phillips from Central Baptist Church in Chattanooga such an honor to have you. And then Dr. Mark Rutland, uh, and I know that God has given him, I already heard when I came in, the message that you preached Sunday. Uh, some of the people were talking about it. Every one of these men have a fresh word from God that they just delivered to their church, many of them Wednesday night. And I believe that God speaks to these men, and he's going to speak to you through what they're going to say. We're delighted to have also Bishop G.A. Bryant from the great church right here in Atlanta, and then Dr. Michael Youssef, who is with us from the Church of the Apostles. And I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a phenomenal night. Don't forget that the prayer lines are available. And you know what's amazing is while this program is being broadcast all across the United States and across the world, it is also being uh, translated into Spanish. Even while I'm speaking, it's going into all the South American countries and all around the world, the European satellites. And I'm just so thankful that TBN is here. You yes, know, I, praise when, the Lord. When, when especially things like this happen, it's so good to know that there's a place that we can turn and we can hear the gospel message and the words of hope that come through the TBN network. Thank God for Paul and Jan Crouch and all that God is doing through TBN. Now, I want to mention to you, just before Vicki Yoey comes and begins to minister in song, uh, that we are very excited about tomorrow night. If you haven't heard, you need to understand what begins tomorrow night. It's the movie that Matt Crouch and Lori and Paul are producing entitled Megiddo. And I'm so excited about this. Matt, I want you to know that we're going to buy the theater out from Free Chapel and we're going to go like we did last, last time when you put your other film out. We just bought the whole... Uh, the whole f uh, studio's out there where the, the theater's out, and we made it a church night. And I want to encourage every one of you. You know, I just believe that the great message in this book and the timing of our, our, this movie and the timing of this movie being released is just an absolute setup by God to get the message out. And it's not a message of gloom and doom. It's a message of ultimately good triumphing over evil. And that's what Megiddo is all about, that better days are coming, that, uh, that really God and his plan 
and what he has purposed for the earth is going to come to pass and no evil can stop it. That's what the message of Megiddo is and it's going to be tremendous. And we want to encourage everybody in the TBN audience. This is our chance. This is our moment to go out and to evangelize our cities and our areas by getting them into these movie theaters and to watch this great, this great movie, Megiddo. It's going to be tremendous and I know that you're going to be blessed by it. So it, it starts tomorrow night and for those of you in the Atlanta area, it's going to be at the Regal Theaters, the AMC Theaters, and the Cineplex Theaters. And we want everybody to go out and uh, see this great movie. Let's pack it out all over Atlanta and all over the world. Let's fill the studios up across the nation. Well, don't forget if there's a need in your life, the reason TBN is here is to heal broken hearts and to minister to people in the lowest times of their life. And you know, I believe that prayer partners know how to pray here at TBN. And you can dial the number that's on the screen throughout this program and you'll get a word in season from people who have been praying for you all day long. So Vicki always going to come. We always love her great ministry and she's going to sing this song and we're going to come back with this great group of guests. So you be blessed as she sings Beyond This Song. Vicki Owen, what a beautiful song, and I know that all of us are feeling that moving in our spirit. Uh, you know, since September the 11th, that Tuesday, there has been such an awakening that's taking place in this nation. I know my church was packed. Every chair we could get was filled. The, the lobbies were filled. The overflows were filled. And God is saying something in the midst of this tragedy. Bishop Long, you... you have been a voice in the city of Atlanta and of course the nation. What's on your heart about what God is saying now? Well, well very basically what, what's on my heart is we're all here together and as, as things have come so together in this nation, it's, I look at the signs, I look at what's going on, even how this tragedy came about in the tools that we use, the airlines that we use, the wars in the heavenlies. And as you look at mm. uh, United Airlines, uh, uh, United and American Airlines, the question is, is America united? Wow. That was the question of that Tuesday. Is America united? The question has been answered. Yes, now we are united. Yes, we are right. really, right. truly united and united under God. Now, what I've been ministering to my people, because so many folk are asking, why would God allow this to happen? Or why did, did, what, is this the, uh, the judgment of God? And I, and I take issue of that. I, we serve a good God. Right. Uh, and, and there are things that we do that we put in motion. Like I, I told my congregation, if I threw the podium up, it would come down. If I stood under it, it would hit me. Uh, there's certain things that happen that we put in motion. The amazing thing that we're looking at right now that we have to understand, I don't look at this as the judgment of God. Uh, I look at it as one of the things that if you want to say God is judging or had judged America, judgment has been going on for a long time, and that judgment is prosperity. Mm. Uh, uh, this country has been judged by prosperity. We have prospered over all of these years, and we were not united up until September 11th because we would not come together and talk about God, would not talk about our Savior. Yes. We were very political. we become so prosperous that, that the, the whole basis of America, our founding fathers, our whole foundation was now being denied. Uh, if you go to Kings and it said, if God be God, follow him. If Baal be Baal, follow him. And the next line said, yeah. and the people said, not a word. Come on. Uh, it, this thing well, about no one's talking separation of church and state now. Right. No one's, you know, Congress <laughs> are coming together. They're bipartisan. They're singing God bless America. It's literally unheard of that <laughs> Billy Graham could get up and mention Jesus Christ yes. in, in, in an ecumenical <laughs> service, et cetera, and those kind of things. And so what's happening, we became such a prosperous nation that we forgot who gave us the ability to get the wealth. That's it. And being hit at the World Trade Center, yeah. uh, that's where our our money is and where where your treasure is that's where your heart is we were hit in the heart we were also hit in government building in the pentagon so it was a question of who is the real government and who is the real provider mm. if if god is the real government and provider he will provide for himself oh. and provide for the people and mm. we forgot that yes. and now you know something about hard times hard times always makes you realize who and what's important 
<laughs> and what, what, right. what happened, as, as they said, it, it was literally to destroy this nation. Mm -hmm. But this nation has now refocused mm -hmm. on God, right. who is the foundation Amen. and who is, the, who is the, uh, a supplier of all of our needs. And when we establish ourselves again, which we have done, I am, I am excited, Ron, because <laughs> we're talking military force and all this kind of yeah. stuff of how we're going to deal with this. But I think the, the, the major force in power has been overlooked that a nation has now come together in agreement with God, submitting to God, and that spiritual power that's yes, now yes. being going across that's this right. world yes. is a greater weapon than that's flying right. jets and, and, and aligning our military forces. There is an extreme war going on right now that we don't even see just because we have come that's together right. and we're not ashamed of the gospel of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Praise God. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. That's but we thing. need to remember. That's right. That's right. Remember the name of the Lord. That's right. Amen. And that is powerful. That's, that's so true. That's right. Dr. Rutland, what, what, have, what has the Lord been saying to you? Well, I was thinking about uh, what Bishop was just saying there. You know, it's an unusual thing, isn't it, really? Uh, on the day of all that, uh, an ironic aspect of it is that prayer erupted spontaneously mm -hmm. at every level. Yes, right. yeah. Pray, 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 pray was the word everywhere. And That's I thought, true. you know, isn't it, isn't it strange that an event like this put prayer back in the public schools? Yeah. They, were, they were praying everywhere. <laughs> no, nobody was stopping prayer. No, no, I, didn't, I didn't hear a word of objection. I didn't hear anybody saying, everybody was saying pray, pray. And, and, and it's, it's, that's really uh, consistent historically. Um, I, I, you know, everybody's saying, I think I have a word from the Lord, you know, a word. I, I actually, in all humility, I actually think that I have a word, not, not, uh, not a word of prophecy or something. I mean an individual word. And the word may surprise you. It's a word I've been studying for about six months in Scripture. And it uh, periodically appears throughout the Bible at, at propitious moments. And its appearance is as a bridge. It's a bridge word. Mm. It stands between two counterbalancing concepts or sets of facts. The first of which does not have the power to obviate or um, lessen the second. And that word is nevertheless. Mm. Uh, it'll say, okay, this happened, this happened, this happened. Nevertheless, yes. All right. this Hallelujah. happens. Um, the conquest of Jebus. David's conquest of Jebus, which became Jerusalem. You know, it's a, it talks about what was impregnable, this fortress. Even the blind and the lame could defend it. You remember that? Yes. And it lists all these things. And then it says, nevertheless, David conquered Jebus. Yeah. <laughs> all these things are said. Right. And I've been studying this word. In fact, I, I, uh, I've written a book, and the book will be out in January. I'm very, very excited about it. It's just on this one word, nevertheless. But in this time, I, I want to comfort people with this word. Mm. 2 Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, mm. the foundation of the Lord standeth mm. sure. Praise mm. God, yes. Nevertheless, wow. mm. so good. the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Mm. All these things are true. We don't have to deny. Uh, denial is not the same thing as faith. Mm -hmm. We don't have to deny these things. We can grieve. We can mourn. Yes. The foundations of buildings shaken. Yes. Mm. Towers fall down. Mm. Homes shattered. Daddies that are not coming home. Mm. Right, right. Young widows whose arms are empty and little children that are, that are eating alone tonight. Mm. Their daddy's not coming home. Policemen that have been killed. Yes. Fire departments that have been decimated. Yes. And, and a nation wounded. Mm. We can pile all of that up mm. on one side of the scale. And the whole thing balances with one, with one word. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. <laughs> Nevertheless. Yes. God isn't shaken. The foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Paul used it in another time. He said, nevertheless, I know whom I have believed. <laughs> and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which, I like which I've committed unto him I like against that. that day. Yes, sir. He said, okay, I'm suffering these things. He, in 2 Timothy, the last letter he wrote, the internal evidence of the, of the letter seems to imply that he was even executed the next morning. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said, that I've come to the end of my race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I finished my course. Henceforth, in Greek, it means immediately after this. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of life. Mm -hmm. But then he says, nevertheless, mm -hmm. I Never know whom I have believed, mm -hmm. yes. and I'm persuaded that he is able. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, Bishop, we could preach on nevertheless for about a year. <laughs> so we wouldn't exhaust that. That's right. it's, That's it's, a, That's it's a great word. Mm, yes, it is. It's, it's a word for, um, as a college president, I say to young people all the time, everywhere I go, I say, look, you come to a spirit-filled college if you can. Yeah, you know, southeastern if at all possible. <laughs> but, uh, but if you can't go to a spirit-filled college, you may wind up at some profane secular university where some uh, atheistic scholar has honed his arguments to a razor edge. And he is ready to gut your faith and slit the throat of your joy in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's capable, trained, and you're not. You're an 18-year-old freshman, and he lays you open with his arguments, and then he says, now, nah, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? He said, well, I'm not smart enough to argue with you. I don't, I don't have all the apologetic answers. I'm not a brilliant PhD like you are, but I do have one thing to say. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> and I think that's so important that... That we, that we show that we are not, uh, that we are not afraid mm. Mm. like the world is fearing right mm. now. That's right. That's right. He has not given us a spirit of fear. That's right. That's right. And even though we are very much aware of the, the war that apparently is coming and all that is happening, I have never been more glad to be a born again Christian Amen. than right now. Thank God. Right now. That brings a peace to your life, doesn't it? <laughs> Dr. Ron Phillips, I could tell you're preacher button has been pushed. <laughs> I can't take much more. <laughs> I am so honored to just to sit with you men of God. Bless you. I really am. And uh, my friends that I've known and loved and, and to know that uh, this gives me hope. Yes. yes. To see the men of God together to serve the Lord. And God gave me a word last night. Uh, at our church out of Psalm 25. And it's a personal word, and I just want to take about three minutes and uh, just speak to maybe somebody who lost somebody or who may be in a... In a and, and you wonder, what do you do in the face of treachery? Mm. And David, we believe this psalm was written after David had returned to Ziklag and his family had been kidnapped and his village had been burned with fire. It, it, it's, it's a similar tragedy. Uh, it was treachery. And uh, how do you respond when that happens? And I'm reading now the New King James, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Mm. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Now listen to this. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Mm -hmm. These people struck us without cause. Now, without getting into a lot of preaching here tonight, <laughs> God gave me a little bit of just a, like you're nevertheless. <laughs> he gave me a, a thing just this very simple. And I want to just mention these three or four things. One, when treachery comes, when you, when you don't know why it's happened to you, number one, Lift up your soul. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I can't explain all of that in Hebrew. I looked it all up, and, <laughs> and, and what I found was it, it simply means there comes a time in your life when if you don't have anybody else, you've got God. Lift up your soul. Yeah. At Ziklag, they wanted to kill David, even his men. And I love it. He looked around for some help. And then it says he encouraged himself yes. in the Lord. Yes. Lift up your soul to God. Amen. And then pick up your shield. It says, I will trust the shield of faith. Lift up, pick up. Then open up the Word of God. For it says here, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Uh, lead me in your truth. You know, I didn't have a theory, but I had a Bible. Mm -hmm. and, and at times like these, we need to lift up our soul to God, yes. pick up our shield of faith, and open up the open Word of God. Mm. See, yeah. I'm not through. One more, maybe two more. We need to fess up. <laughs> That's Alabama for confess your sin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me say this to the people of New York. If God did that, Chattanooga's next. There's not a city. You know, God allowed it. There's no yeah. question about that. I don't, I don't understand his sovereignty. 
But evil men did this. That's right. He's Abba Father. That's right. That's right. He's Abba Father. Yeah. But all of us are sinners yeah. whom yeah. he has forgiven by the blood of Christ. Right. And old David cried out. He said, Lord, don't remember the sins of my youth. He says in verse 11, pardon my iniquity for it's great. In verse 18, forgive all my sin. It's a time for self-examination. Yes, and that's right. going on all over this country. Yes, sir. And to say, Lord, those people up there didn't deserve this. Uh, we've all failed and fallen short of what God wants us to be. And the last thing is look up. Amen. David said, fear the Lord. Verse 12, who is the man that fears the Lord? This isn't cringing fear and terror, just like you said. It is reverential awe. Yes, it's time to look up and say, God, you're sovereign. We can't explain this. We don't have all the answers, but you do. And God says, if you'll look up, he says here clearly, he'll teach us his way. He will cause us to dwell in prosperity. Verse 13, our descendants, that's those coming after us, are going to be great. And I believe that's going to happen. I believe this tragedy is going to result in a greater generation rising. Yeah. And he said, my secrets I'll reveal to you. One day he'll tell us yes. why all of this happened. Yes. So I want to tell you today, lift up, pick up, open up, fess up, look up. Hey, Amen. He's good word. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Bishop G.A. Yes, Bryant. Yes, I like that. Pastor, great church right here in Atlanta, Fountain of Praise Worship Center. You've been here in Atlanta for over 20 years pastoring. Yes. And uh, you were on a local Praise the Lord program, and all heaven broke loose. <laughs> and that's, right. th th that's why you're here tonight, because God gave you a word. Come on. Share, share a little bit about what you're feeling in your heart. In the midst of what's going on, I'm sensing a lot of pain yeah. and a lot of anger. Mm. But God is yet on the throne. Regardless of what's going on now, he yet reigns. God is an awesome God. Yes. Yes. Regardless of how we can, cannot connect with what has transpired, but God's hand is in the midst of all of this. I begin to hear my brother begin to talk about what the Lord was giving him. And Bishop Long, my brother here, but God is saying something very deep in my spirit. When David went through an experience, he began to cry out and he encouraged himself in the Lord. Then Paul began to have a problem and he began to pray. And the scripture said he sought the Lord thrice that he may remove oh, yes. the pain, the infirmity, the hurt, the weariness. He couldn't connect with that because he felt because who he was he shouldn't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we as believers, we feel like we don't have to go through certain things because Jesus is Lord of our life. But God allows us to go through things yes. to build our faith. But he spoke and said, my grace, my grace. is sufficient. My grace. And I hear God saying this to America, my Come grace yes. is sufficient. Yes. My strength is made perfect in weakness. weakness. We're going through a weak period now, but he's yet gone. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He reigns. Yes, he, reigns. He, he sits on the throne. Yes, he does. Yes, he's Lord of the earth. Yes, he is. And one thing I can see what God is saying and what God is doing, he brought the country together yes. in prayer. Yes. If Hallelujah. my people. Right. If my people. If my people. Come on. Who are called by my name. Yes. Will humble themselves and pray. pray. Yes. Seek my face. Yes. We have the answer yes. as being believers. Amen. We have the answer. It's talking to the Father. America, God loves us. Amen. This country was, was built on Christianity. Yes, it was. And those that have turned away from God, I urge you yes. to get to your phones and call. Yes. And Amen. turn back to God. Turn yes, back sir, because God. now is the time. That's right. <laughs> now is the That's time. Right. Our God reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Yes. He's alive and well. And all things work together for the good. I hear this echoing yes. in my spirit. For the good of them that love the Lord. Oh, yes. He reigns. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. You know, he said, we know all things. We know. He didn't say we understand. Oh. There's a lot of things about God I know, but I don't understand all the things that he's doing. 
But the measure of our trial is the measure of God's confidence in us. And he doesn't give explanations, but he always gives promises. Because mm -hmm. you can't live off an explanation, but you can live off of a promise. Hallelujah. And he said, I'll never leave you, That's good. and I'll never forsake you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Michael, yourself, you, you give us a very uh, different perspective. You are originally born and reared in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, pastor a phenomenal church here in Atlanta. Uh, just, uh, just an amazing ministry and a worldwide radio ministry. I want to hear what God is saying to you in this hour that we're, that we're in. Well, I'm one of those people who are most fortunate and blessed that back on a day in April 1984, I was privileged to receive an American citizenship. I am the recipient of the generosity of this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, as my congregation and our listeners, radio and television, would tell you, I am deeply grateful to the United States of America. Because many of us who have escaped persecution, mm. many of us who have escaped tyranny yes. and dictatorships, have come to this country for the freedom yes. that it offers, that very freedom that's under attack right now. I do understand firsthand what persecution is all about. The first 19 years of my life, I literally, 33 years ago, I escaped from Egypt and uh, literally escaped. And I wrote a book to tell the story of how God supernaturally uh, helped me to escape under the reign of Nasser back in those wild days in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I am, uh, I am so emotional, so deeply moved, and so frustrated to see uh, that this is coming on our doorsteps. But nonetheless, as Dr. Mark said, uh, we have to love our enemies. And as a mark of that commitment, we are taking the gospel back to the people of the Middle East yes. uh, with radio and television. Mm -hmm. uh, we are proclaiming the gospel to every Arabic-speaking nation. Mm. Um, and God is using this to, to melt many hearts and bring a lot of folks to Christ. Uh, uh, so that's why I, 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 I am basically a preacher of the gospel, yeah. and I long to see people get saved. Yes. There is no greater joy in heaven, Jesus yes. said, than when people come to Jesus Christ, acknowledge Him as the Savior and the Lord of their lives. And uh, all of our churches were packed Sunday, right. and, uh, and I could not help but preach the gospel. I said, this is the ancient gospel. That's the only gospel yes, that right. we have. Yeah. And the only comfort I can give to the congregation is that word from the Lord is the gospel of Jesus yes. Christ. Come unto me, all her travail and a heavy laden. Jesus is knocking on the door of every single That's person right. who's watching us right That's now. Right. Those who have turned away from the Lord and yes. those who have never known him. Yes. Those who have thought all roads are going to lead mm. to God. All of those who thought all the religions are... Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. Mm. This is it. Mm. Yes. He's one way. Yeah. He is the way. He's the truth. Yeah. There are not many truths. There's one truth. Yeah. It's Jesus. Yeah. And that is the gospel. Uh, pure and simple. And that is what I proclaim every single day on radio and television and in, to my congregation. We have no other message. Right. Mm. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Right you know, now. Jensen Franklin Graham, every time they ask him a question, he never answered them. Yes, They'd say, well, what do you think about th these people? He said, for God so loved the world. <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son. That's it. And that's all, I, I mean, I just, I, I, I just broke down and wept. Mm. And I want to throw it back to you because I know there's some people about ready to get saved. I believe that. I believe that too. I do too. I think that, um, that America's heart is tender yes. right now to the gospel, yes. the gospel of yes. Jesus Christ. I think, Dr. Michael, yourself, you yes. need to lead people to Christ yes. right now. Yes. Absolutely. Just look into that camera and pray the prayer with them. Now, my friend, I want to tell you that God loves you. Our God is a God of love. Yes. And what we have seen right now is for the evil to manifest million times himself so that you are able to contrast Satan with God. That's right. And you see that our God is the God of love, That's right. not the author of evil. That's right. And he is the very one who put his perfect son on a cross yes. in order to pay for my sins and for yours. Yes. And right now he is calling you. Yes. He's saying, I am waiting for you. I love you. My son died for you. Come to me. 
and I will forgive you all of your yes. sins, past, present, and future sins, and you will receive eternal life. I told the congregation Sunday, every one of us have a ticket in their pocket, and that ticket says destination, either heaven or hell. There is no third That's place. Right. Yes. If it says heaven, it's stamped with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. If, it, uh, if, it, if, it said, if it said hell, let me plead with you, because that's stamped with your own blood. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't want that. He desires not that the sinner should perish, mm -hmm. but he will that's turn right. from his wickedness and live. God loves you. Will you turn to him today, right now, this moment, say, so Jesus, come into my life. Yes. And he will because that's what he promised. That's and right. he always keeps his word. Let's pray that prayer together. Yes. Father, yes. I receive you. Hallelujah. Father, Jesus. I receive Thank forgiveness. I acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross for me, that he paid the price for me to get to heaven. I receive that shed blood of Jesus yes. Christ as his payment for my salvation. Come into my life, forgive my sins, assure me of heaven right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go to your phone right now and dial the number that's on the screen if you need prayer. People are standing by. They're ready to minister to you. You know, the love of God, there's nothing you've done that God can't forgive. Right. There's, there's nothing that you've done that His blood cannot forgive you and set you free. That's right, and right now, call on Him. He's near you. Mm -hmm. Call on Him. And then pick up that phone and yes. dial the number that's on the screen. Vicki, you're always going to sing once again, The Peace Speaker. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Vicki Yowen, Peace Speaker. He's speaking to you right now. You know, when you get in a storm, God will do one of two things. He'll either calm it or he'll calm you in the midst of it. And his peace is flowing like a river right now in that room where you are. Just let it touch you right now. You know, we had invited tonight Senator Max Cleland, our, our senator here in Georgia, one of our senators. I know Bishop Long, you know him. He's been to our church several times. A great American. Uh, was terribly wounded in the Vietnam War, but has come back to serve his nation. And he sent this special letter to TBN, to Paul and Jan, and to all the people. And they've asked me to read it. In his first inaugural address on the eve of World War II, President Franklin Roosevelt said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. These words have never rung more true in Americans than they do today. Although the events of this last week were nothing short of sickening, our nation and our president have responded in a way that we can all be proud of and heartened by. When we see the, hero the heroism in the ashes of countless acts of kindness and brotherhood between people who before Tuesday were nothing more than strangers, these acts tell us that although we may have seen the face of evil, it is the hand of God that remains with us. That's right. We all go forward on our mission to right the wrongs that were put against us last week. And we can take courage in the knowledge that we stand together as Americans and as children of God whose, heart, whose faith will see us through this terrible chapter in our history. God bless us all and God bless America. Yes. Senator Max Cleland from the great state of Georgia. Yes. And we all say an amen to that. You know, gentlemen, one of the questions that, that comes up, I'm sure, in so many people's minds when you see the tragedy that we have seen is why would God allow something like this to happen? Dr. Rutland, you're the theologian here. Am I? Tell us, <laughs> t why does God allow tragedies and, and these horrific things to happen? Well, I, I don't know that uh, anybody's going to have a full answer to that, uh, Jensen, but I, I will tell you that there are a couple of things we can say. Let's, let's rephrase the question just a little bit. Why doesn't God stop this? Mm. Why doesn't God keep a thing like this from happening? And here's, here's the best answer I know to give. This is all the light that I've got at this time. Ask me next year, maybe I'll have a better answer. But right now, what I answer is, God is going to stop this. Amen. God is, the day is going to come when God's going to stop this. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwelleth. That day is going to come. But when he stops it, now this is what those who are nominal Christians or flirting around the borders of Christianity or those who, are, who feel real uh, antipathy toward Christianity say, why won't God stop it now? But if he stops it now, he stops all sin now. Mm -hmm. He stops all sin now. That's right. So while God delays giving sinners time to do sinful stuff, 
he is also giving sinners times to repent. Yes. So there's, there's a part of me that, uh, let's, let's take theology now and make it pragmatic. There's a part of me that says, uh, come soon, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. even now. Amen. Come now. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I have a brother who's not a Christian. There you are. Uh, maybe he's watching this right now. I mean, I, 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 my brother is not a Christian, one of my brothers. And every time I'm tempted to say, Lord, come today and end this wickedness, there's another part of me that instantly mm. says, no, Lord, wait. Right. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Don't come today. Yes. That's right. give, us, give us one more year. Give him, give him yes. one more day. But while God waits for him mm -hmm. to find time to repent and be saved, oh. we can't have it both ways. We can't say to God, stop sin that inconveniences or hurts me, mm -hmm. but let me go on lying and cheating on my wife. Oh my. Mm -hmm. So, the, so the, the, a lot of the people say, why didn't God stop a drunk from veering over the center line and wiping yeah. some family out? Yeah. But I don't want God to stop me doing my wickedness. Mm -hmm. When God comes, he's going to stop it, mm -hmm. and he's going to stop it all. Mm -hmm. That's right. But he's delaying now to give the wicked time to repent. Out of mercy. Out of mercy. Out of grace. And my vote, mm -hmm. my vote, because I have people I want saved. Yes. My vote is, in my own heart, I say, oh God, come now. But my vote still has to be, Lord, give my brother one more day. Well, that's good. That's right. yes. Bishop Long, do you think the Lord is saying to the ministers too that maybe we need to focus back again more than ever on the cross mm -hmm. and the blood and, and he preaching about eternity? There is a heaven, there is a hell. We are to occupy until he comes. But, it, you know, when these things happen, when, when Billy Graham stood up in National Cathedral and, and he just started, and he, he started talking about the cross, it, I, I couldn't help but weep. I couldn't right. help but my, my eyes teared up because that message, when it's all said and done, that's the message that America needs more than, and we need the whole gospel. But that message needs to be foremost. In our it, it, it's so very interesting. You said I'm just completing a conference, and one of our, our speakers made a very wonderful point. Uh, we, have, we have started majoring in so much deep stuff. We, uh, mm. we, our congregations expect us, and they come out to hear us in this deep theology, so something deep, that they won't even jump in. They just want to hear it and let it tickle their ear. <laughs> and, and, it's really, and we haven't, we haven't mastered the simplicity of the gospel. We have, we have gotten so far off into our deep theology and, and something new every Sunday that, you know, I'm reminded of the story of the preacher that got just called to a church and he preached the sermon, told that wonderful service, came back the next week, preached the same sermon, came back the next week, preached the same sermon until they became concerned. And they asked him, why do you keep preaching the same message? He said, once you start doing what I preach, I'll switch it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it, it's, it's this undue pressure that we place on ourselves as ministers of the gospel to sometimes play to our congregations who are not actually wow. walking in the very simplicity of the cross, forgiveness of sins, what will wash away our sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. It, even the average Christian on the street having just the mere ability to lead somebody to Christ instead of saying right. on Thursday, come to church with me to get saved. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind uh -huh. of things. And so it has to be a coming back to us. Mm -hmm. To the B Billy Graham's message has always been a simple message of the cross oh, and God. would draw thousands yes. after thousands yes. after thousands mm -hmm. just hearing that word, I even, I'm even sitting up here, uh, John the Baptist and them didn't work hard. He only you know, had one sermon, That's repent right. for the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> I, I mean, what, the, with those kind of things, we've, we've complicated this thing to the point that people don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't preached it to the point that they're even willing to die for it. Mm -hmm. and, and so in all this, I, I, I am really inspired because what, what's, what's really happened, this wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the news and watching what's happening in the body of Christ. I've never seen pastors come together like they're coming together now and not jockeying for who gets the mic first and who gets this first, submitting to one another in a spirit of unity to bless the people, bring healing to the people, and the simplicity of the message of the gospel. I, I want to say this, it is an exciting time in the midst of this pain. And what I mean by that, if we did history and stuff, if we go back to the turn of the century, World War I, 
uh, it was a very tragic time, a very, uh, lives were lost, but that is the same time that you had Azusa. Mm -hmm. You had an ushering in of the yes. great spirit of God. Yeah. When you talk about what happened at uh, Pearl Harbor, where, where, where we just talked about, and, and the tragedy of those lives caught all of a sudden, et cetera, you got World War II. But again, now you have Oral Roberts who came on the scene, the gifting of the spirit, et cetera. There was something birthed out of every one of those tragedies. Mm. We are now in a declaration of war. Now, we can sit up there and look at what's happening in the natural, and I understand all this pain. But if I know God like yes, I know sir. God, something's about to burp. Yes, We've been sir. preaching yes, it, sir. and it's yes, not yes, a sir. bad thing. Yes, it's a good thing. <laughs> I believe the corporate man of the church, the body of Christ, is now standing up and the Spirit of the Lord is being released across this nation. When you use that scripture and said what Paul said, what the Lord spoke to him said, my grace is sufficient for thee, that I make you strong in your weakness. That What, what actually happens is we are stronger when we're weak. Yes, yes. come and on. And so what happens here is a nation, nation. now that is yes. spiritually stronger yes. than it's ever been. Praise and God. when that spirit oh, is moving truth. across, we're ushered, I think on Tuesday, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that morning of September 11th, it was a scream because all of us had preached something's about to happen. That's right. Something's about to That's be birthed right. in this nation. That it has to happen yeah. because of the way we were going. Something's right. about to happen because as America goes, so goes the world. Mm. And so something was about to break loose. I was in the delivery room with my wife and right before our son came out, she let out with the greatest scream of pain that she ever could. Mm. We screamed mm. on Tuesday morning, Jesus. but we were, we were actually Actually releasing, releasing yes. a spirit of God yes. over this nation yes. like never before. Yes. And if we open up our eyes to see that God is moving and changing from, from, from our children all the way up across this world and nation, something has just birthed and God has released his spirit like never before. Yeah. And I'm excited because each day it's become this nation will not go back the way it was. Uh -huh. It will not yes, be sir. business as usual. Praise you cannot sir. talk that stuff anymore mm. after what's happened now. Yes, and because we have a government that's under a government that has just discovered he is still <laughs> king of kings and Hallelujah. lord of lords. Yeah. Glory is a releasing of something yeah. that yeah. I'm excited about. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. <laughs> a government under a government. A government under a government. Yeah. I'll tell you, I feel God's presence here mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Dr. Michael, you, yourself, what what do you think? What do you think God is trying to birth, as He was saying? I, I was fascinated by what Bishop Long has just said. Ron remembers uh, I was speaking to the National yes. Religious Broadcasters, and in the last two years, I've been so burdened by the way, not the world, but the way we Christians have been living. Yes. And uh, I mm. shared with the National Religious Broadcasters my burden. And as my brother Bishop just quoted, if my people humble themselves, the next verse says, now I'm going to be watching you. Yeah. And I'm going to see how you're going to live. Mm, you see, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm concerned that in the times of crisis, we're going to cry to God, mm. but then we stop living what God wants us to live. Mm. That whole life of holiness yes. and righteousness yes. before yes. God, yes. self-giving, is instead of self-absorption, we in the Christian church, we, the people of God, are living, Jensen, just like the people of the world. Mm -hmm. We are making no difference. Uh, our, our, our world views are the same. Our worldly life is the same. We spend money on the same things. We do the same thing. We go to the same movies and we read the same books and the magazines. And I'm saying, I was sharing with, with, with my, my heart yes. months ago. It's been the last two years, uh, Bishop Long, I, I was... I've really become so burdened. I've been reading on the history of the first awakening and the second yes. great awakening of the United States. And I've been reading J. Edwin Orr, who's a man I loved very much, a man, a, a great authority on, on revivals. And in the last two years, I have been feeling a burden to call our people to come back to the life of holiness yes. and righteousness yes, and self-giving mm -hmm. instead of, of taking and taking and taking and then worship the blessing instead of the blessing. Say that. Oh, come and on. I could not agree more with Bishop Long. God is calling his people to walk righteously before him and to really be different from the world. Yes. And I think that's when God moves. Yes. And I, and I, 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 I hate, I cried, I wept every single day from Tuesday the 11th until today. I just wept every day over what is happening. 
And yet at the same time, I, I share Bishop Long's vision that um, my cry is, God, let this not be just a temporary thing. Yes. Yes. Just yes. let it be yes. a life-changing thing. Let it be a call for an, a third great awakening for yes. America yes. so that we would see again men and women would come weeping before God. You know, when Jonathan Edwards used to preach, yes. he, he would have his notes yeah. so close to his He wasn't a great eloquent man, no. mm. but people would be weeping and crying and repenting of their sins before he even uh, st start preaching. And when you read the history of the Great Awakening or Azusa or uh, the, the, the things that God has done in the past is when His Spirit genuinely just moves out and pours out, people will repent of their sins. But it has to begin with God's people confessing their sins. That's right. Yes. That's right. You know, a strange, a, a, a strange thing in that, Michael, is Satan actually is the, is the instrumentation this is, this is an odd thing to say, but he, Satan is actually the instrumentation by which humanity is turned back to God. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. the, until uh, nobody turns to God because it's a nifty idea. Right. He overplayed his hand. Okay. There's yeah. some way in which That's we are fueled back. He overplayed his hand. Overplayed Satan, like that. Satan lacks, the one thing that he lacks is the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. For all Patience. of his cunning and all of his intelligence, everything, he lacks the fruit of the Spirit. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. Mm -hmm. right. Satan, chronically, historically, biblically, throughout history, Satan never knows when to quit. Mm -hmm. if, he would, if he would just hit a guy one time, mm -hmm. just hit him one time, <laughs> then he could drive him away from <laughs> God. <laughs> but I've seen it so many times. I've seen him like knock that. a guy down, take his job, take his family, put him in prison, and then put him in solitary confinement, and in solitary confinement he'll get saved. Amen. And Satan says, oh man, if I'd quit five minutes ago, I, I had that guy. Hallelujah. You know? Yeah. Now, <laughs> now I'm, be I'm beginning to think, I'm beginning to think, and I'm, I'm the eternal optimist, I have to say this, okay. but I'm beginning to think that Satan didn't know when to quit with America. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's just coming into the edge of my peripheral vision yes. Praise God. that mm. Satan may have hit us one time too hard wow. mm. and may actually be driving us. I think he said, I'll drive them to their knees. Mm. I'll drive them to their knees. And you know what? <laughs> he did. I think he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That's right. Woo! Glory. Woo! Hallelujah. My God. My God. You know, I never understood. I'd read about Noah building that ark, and he only put one window in it, and he put it in the top. And, that, and that's because when we get in a storm, God didn't want us looking down. He didn't want us looking out at the circumstances. I can see him going to Noah and saying, how's things looking? And he'd say, they're looking up. <laughs> they're looking up. And I'm going to tell you something. For the people of God, for the people of God, Yes. We're learning where we need to lift yes, up our eyes yes, to. Yes, There's right. no help yes. in this world yes. outside of God. And many of you, the Lord has allowed you to get into this storm to teach you to look up from right. the, to the hills from which Amen. comes your help. Amen. Our help is the Lord. Amen. Bishop Long, I know you're going to have to leave a little early, so I'm, I'm kind of favoring you to, to squeeze all of that wisdom out of you that, that we've got. What, what else do you feel in your spirit? That is so true. I believe that America will never be the same again. Mm -hmm. uh, just something has, has I, I, you know, we, we, we practice our preaching stuff on that. It, it, it's, it's, we, there's something has been released now over mm -hmm. this nation. Yes. I, I talked last night about God is out of control. And basically, we have been trying to control God when He's out of control, and and, and right now, this out of control that 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 extra when Satan didn't know when to quit. Yeah, yeah. He, oh yeah. Nothing changes until you get sick and tired. <laughs> Now, the, the, I, I say this, that people are where they are, and if they don't like where they are, it's because they're just tired of it. Mm -hmm. But when you get sick and tired of something, mm -hmm. then something happens. Yes, that's right. And right now, this nation has gotten sick and tired of its own self, <laughs> its own sin, its, yeah. its own denial. And for this instant transformation, now, th none of us could have, could have anticipated yeah. that all from the Congress, the White House, all the mm -hmm. way down to the schools, et cetera, uh, that, that we would have such a revival going on right now and, and, and it is both of our heartfelt uh, that 
that it stays, that we continue to push yes. in the presence, not not when it feels like it's okay, go back. Yeah, but I, I think we've right. come to, we, we've launched out in the deep. Back. Bush Amen. has launched too far out in the deep. Congress had no, we'll keep playing the clips. We'll buy time and just show them <laughs> on, the, on the Capitol saying, God bless America. I'll run that over yeah. to remind them that this is where we yeah. are. We cannot go back. And there is Amen. no separation. And so I think, I think <laughs> I'm excited because we're going to have a great Christmas this year because <laughs> the government buildings will not put Xmas oh my and, and they will hey, not X God out. God, I was trying to figure out, my wife was, I was looking at doing a book about how did we offend God? Uh, uh, what did he do to, to, to offend us that we don't want to even call his name? We'll celebrate this, yeah. the, the birthday, yeah. but we don't want to, on government buildings, we cannot display mm -hmm. anything about Christ and all that. And now we're calling his name through the halls of government buildings and schools. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas. I'm Hallelujah. just looking at, Hallelujah. we're going to celebrate the birth <laughs> and, and, and all of that, I, I, I almost anticipate they'll be afraid not to put Christ on the building, you know, right. those kind of things, because they got to be under the blood. That's so right. in all that, I want the people of God to know, and this nation to know, especially, that yes, we must mourn the lives that were lost, and, we're, and the nation is rallying, just mm -hmm. everyone rallying pouring money, support, not just sending money, but rolling up their sleeves, getting out, giving blood and all of that to help. And yet it, it is tragic. There's been some lives lost and some rebuilding and, and time healing, et cetera. But I also want this nation to understand that when we stand together like we're doing, under the government of God and the covering of God. This mm. is still an exciting and great yes. time. And, and I believe in Kings that, that Elijah said, you know, I hear the sound of the abundance wow. of rain. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm hearing. I'm hearing yeah. a yes, sound sir. of abundance yes. of rain, yes, of the coming of Christ in the name of, of salvation, getting folks saved. I, I would preach what you've said so many times. I, I thought the body of Christ had become so selfish because we're praying for God to come. And I said, I got cousins, uncles, mm -hmm. brothers, and stuff that are still not mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. How can we be so selfish mm -hmm. to have that's tasted right. and walk in the glory of God and know that there's some that still have not done that and yeah. wanting God to come? Amen. You know, so in all that, it, it is the most exciting time. It is... Uh, we're having record-breaking salvation yeah, in our church yeah, 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 and yeah, our churches and right. things like that. Which well, I heard, uh, I heard Paul Kraut say the other night that, that they had had, I believe he said four times the amount of salvation since the crisis mm -hmm. hit Amen. of people calling in. And I believe there are people watching right That's now, right. Bishop Long, that are ready to turn their life over yes. to Jesus. Would you just one more time lead us in a prayer and pray for our nation and Pray for God's will to be done in people who are watching this program right now that need to make that decision. Well, at this moment, I, I, it is my prayer. And all you have to do is confess him and make him Lord and Savior, a Savior and Lord of your life. That's a decision right now. If you want people to walk through it with you, there you can call in the prayer line. There are there, anointed people ready to receive your yeah. calls. Do not delay. Yeah. I always say this, that, that all of us have come out of eternity into time. And what we do in time determines how we'll spend eternity. Wow. And so right now, we don't know how long we'll be here. And that's not really the important thing. It is what we do while we're in time that determines our eternity. Yes, and please right. understand, eternity is much longer than time. Mm. So in all of that, I am challenging you with all that is going on to get your life in order. Mm. Because... Some families are not grieving. They will miss their loved ones, but they're not grieving mm. in the sense of knowing that, that they were not saved. Mm. There are some families that are rejoicing, even though this caught them off guard and it's going to take some time, but knowing that their brother, their, their mother, their sister, their husband, the wife yeah. is in the hands of God. Yeah. And what I love about this, Ron, is so the Bible says to be absent from yes, the body sir. means yes. to be present yes. with the Lord. Now, yes. what, what that simply means, you cannot say the full word absent and, and, and present at, at the same time, because as soon as you say, ah, and you, you, as soon as you take one <laughs> breath, you're releasing another Woo. one on the other side. And so in all of that, the instant of that, I, I'm praying for your security. I'm praying for this nation. I'm praying for the leaders of this nation to recognize that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down That's of strongholds. Right. Yes. And I understand all we're doing, we have a very strong president and the Congress and everyone's coming together and the real generals and the real leaders are the men that I'm, and women of God that I'm, I'm, I'm present with here today who are leading the communities, the ground troops, the ground forces, door to door evangelism that's moving out. Expect great things. Yes. See great yes. 
yes. miracles. Witness it. Yes. Lift up your heads. Yes. Don't get in a box. Don't get discouraged about the stock market and all that. Please, our Father is rich with houses yes. hey. and land. Amen. He is our provider, and he will continue to do it. Hey, man. I just want to... I want to pray for this nation and yes. pray for its healing yes. and pray that we continue to be totally directed. Do not go backwards, Don't but we back. press forward mm, in right. what God has ordained. Father, in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus, Jesus, we bless you. Yes, Lord. We honor you. Yes. yes. You are King of kings yes. and Lord of lords. Yes. Lord of lords. Yes. We thank you that we can call upon you because you are the sustainer of life. Yes. And right now we ask you to just comfort all of those who have lost loved ones. Mm. And then to thank you for such courageous firemen and policemen yes, yes, that, yes. that not only in, in, in New York and Washington, yes. but around this country Amen. Is, yes. that are doing everything they can to save lives daily, mm. Mm. even at the risk of their own. Yes. Yes, Lord. I thank you for a president and a government thank you for that. that is seeking you first. Yes, Lord. Give them wisdom and align Grace. men and women of God around them to speak wisdom yes, into their heart and into their spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And God, we're excited. Yes, Lord. We're excited because every time your people cry out in repentance, mm. you always come to our aid yes, and Lord. restore yes, us. Mm. Restore us now, Lord Jesus. Yes. yes. Bring us back into yes, your Lord. presence in this time of refreshing. Yes, yes Lord. We yes. love you yes. and we bless Fresh. you mm. and we thank you. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Praise Hallelujah. God. Right now, go to your phone. Dial the number that's on the screen. If you're going through a crisis in your life, if you need to know somebody's praying for you, that's the beautiful thing about TBN. You can know somebody's praying for you right now. I love this song Vicki Yo is going to sing. Nobody can sing it like her. It's entitled, He's Been Faithful.